Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about the top retirement mistakes that we saw federal employees make in 2020. We've got some really good information today and we're handing out a free ebook on retirement questions that you should be asking yourself as a federal employee. So stick around to the end, you'll find out how we can get that. And here we go. As many of you know, we work closely with federal employees to help them with retirement planning and all of the complexities around your finances. Beginning of this year, we put together a list of the most common mistakes that we saw federal employees make in the year 2020. And we thought we would put this list together so we could share it with our community, hopefully preventing some of you from making these life altering mistakes. The first mistake we saw a lot of employees make was they didn't consider the impact of their election of benefits at retirement. Take your health benefits, for example. Many people don't understand that in order for you to carry that in and through retirement, you need to have certain conditions met prior to applying for retirement. And one of those conditions is that you have to have it five years prior to you applying for retirement. Now, I want you to consider this important question. If you were to pass away as a retired federal employee and your spouse survives you, okay? So you pass and your spouse remains alive. Would you be okay with them losing their health care coverage, losing FEHB? That's a real risk. We saw this happen to people last year. If you don't elect a survivor annuity for your spouse when you elect your retirement benefits, and if you pass before they do, they are not eligible to continue carrying those health benefits. So you might be thinking, of course someone's gonna elect their survivor pension. Well, that's not necessarily the case. We see people who perhaps have accumulated enough assets in their portfolio, okay? So they feel comfortable enough that they don't necessarily want to have their pension reduced by 10% so that their spouse receives a pension. Well, that comes at a really great cost, at the cost of carrying one of the best benefits that you have, which is your health benefits. Of course, there's exceptions to everything. The really big one here, if both of you are federal employees, you each have that benefit of and, and uh, eligibility of carrying the FEHB in through retirement, okay? So this is really more so a case for someone who is not going to have eligibility of carrying that FEHB, which by the way, can also be a federal employee if they retired prior to their MRA, right? There's a couple of conditions around that. There's a, a, a case that I'm working with currently right now that's going through that exact circumstance. Both federal employees, but the spouse actually does not have that uh, coverage through retirement, so is reliant on their spouse um, and their FEHB coverage into retirement. A lot of folks may be looking to maximize their pension, so they may consider not taking the survivor annuity. Uh, you know, if you ever hear the term pension max, just give us a call first, let's talk about it. Make sure you do your research so that you know what you're signing up for and you know what you're leaving on the table before you sign the dotted lines. The next mistake we see federal employees make is not creating a retirement budget. Now, we're no strangers to not budgeting. And sure, most people go through life and they think about, okay, well, let's make sure we're not spending too much or getting into credit card debt. Uh, let's make sure that we're putting money into our retirement. But have you created a detailed budget, a very specific number that you have targeted? Because that's what's required in retirement. Because now you're no longer earning an income. Now, anything that you've accumulated has to last you for the rest of your life. You want to make sure that you don't run out of money before you run out of time. For your retirement to be successful, you have to have a budget in place. Once your portfolio's job no longer is to accumulate wealth and instead now generate those paychecks in retirement, the whole game changes. Let's say you're taking $7,000 a month from your portfolio. How long is that gonna last? Is that the right number? Is that too much? Is that a sustainable amount? Here's the other side. Uh, could you actually be taking more? Could you be doing more with your wealth instead? But then what happens if you have a big expense like your roof caves in or your car blows up or you have a big renovation going on or perhaps you have prolonged health expenses that, remember, health insurance doesn't cover long-term care, right? They cover immediate health medical expenses but not the prolonged 
uh, care that someone usually experiences later on in life. And here's another really big one people forget. What happens if the market turns or flips upside down and your portfolio takes a hit right as soon as you retire, right before you retire, or even in the midst of your retirement? Maybe it's later on in life. What happens? Do you know how to adjust from that? Do you know how to rebound from that? And the answer is not just, well, let's be more conservative, because you still need to keep growing your assets so that they are uh, continually providing you with the income that you need. There's an old rule in financial planning that says you can take 4% withdrawals annually, and that's considered sustainable. Now, <clears throat> I threw that in air quotes because number one, that's an old rule, and number two, there is no blanket rule that allows anybody to determine how much they can take from their portfolio. That is a very specific question pertaining to your circumstance, your goals, uh, and all of the other varying factors that are going on in different times of the year, of the decade, of your retirement. If anybody tells you otherwise, so if you hear this in a retirement seminar that you can take 4% from your portfolio, they don't have the full picture. This mistake can be a big thing not accounting for this budgeting element. 4% is not a blanket rule. There's no real blanket answers for any of this type of stuff. And on the other hand, I mentioned this a little earlier, what if you're selling yourself short? Being right outside Washington, DC, many of our clients have high locality adjustments, and so they've accumulated some significant wealth throughout their careers. Have you truly considered everything that your money can do for you? And while we tell people to dream, it's important still that you have a plan in place that you stick to a budget because no retirement plan is bulletproof when it comes to overspending. All right, so check this out. We conducted this interesting experiment with our clients that ranged from folks who had $1 million all the way to folks who had $8 million. And in this experiment, we asked them to Tell us how they felt about their personal level of financial success and rate themselves on a scale of economic affluence. The results were absolutely astonishing. In the $1 million group, we had folks who thought that they had won the lottery and could just go buy whatever they wanted. And in the same group, we also had people who thought that they were struggling and were really concerned about their futures. Even more strikingly, we had people with $8 million who considered themselves average middle class families. The point of this experiment was to confirm that money means different things to people. Everyone has misconceptions about their reality or even about principles of money themselves. How we were uh, raised plays a factor into this. The circumstances in which we experience during our lives shape and form the opinions and our perceptions. I can tell you that even with $8 million in your portfolio, you can still get yourself into bad habits and blow up your retirement plan. So the next mistake that we saw federal employees make was that they expected a pension payment shortly after their retirement date. And this is just not the case. I can tell you it's our experience that it's anywhere between a couple of months to as much as six months before you'll actually receive uh, regular uh, annuity payments from your FERS. Tip here is that you should plan for not having any payments whatsoever for six months. Okay, and the reason for this is that OPM doesn't actually calculate your pension until you retire. There are estimations prior leading up to that, as I'm sure you've seen. However, when you submit for retirement, they go through this adjudicating process, determine your final payment, and that can take as much as six months. So plan to have those expenses that you have for six months covered in some sort of way. Okay, so let's break that down. In terms of practicality, you're talking about anywhere between three to six months, like we just said, right? Uh, in terms of having that cash flow readily available to you in case you don't receive payments, right? So the money is there so that you can use for your expenses. Now, what happens if you have an unplanned expense? For example, a meteor comes through your house and, you know, like I mentioned earlier, your car blows up, your water heater goes out. Those are things that you also need to have an emergency savings for. So now we're bumping up this number a little bit. So really, should we be saying six to 12 months of expenses? Well, maybe, but the problem with that is if you start putting too much cash aside, now you're creating a significant enough cash drag on your portfolio uh, and that can cause some problems. So you decide you're gonna keep it invested, but what if we enter recessionary territory in the markets? 
now you're susceptible to potentially having to pull money from your portfolio while it's down, further moving into losing money territory. Okay, Tiago, but I'm just gonna invest in low volatility investments like bonds. I'm safe, right? No, you're not safe. There is no real safe investment other than cash. And even then, the silent killer, inflation, is slowly depleting your purchasing power. Low volatility investments may be a good idea for you, but be careful. With interest rates as low as they are now, in the short term, it may be okay, but how short is short, right? Because the low interest rates today means we have potentially rising interest rates tomorrow. So if you're talking about a bond, the same bond you buy today, I might be able to get a better rate tomorrow, making your bond worth less. So what do you do? You need the right blend of investments in your portfolio. You need enough not to be causing a drag on your portfolio, but not too much that you're susceptible yourself to that volatility, right? Because volatility is a problem for a retiree in terms of short term needs. You might want to also consider some income paying investments to help increase the cash flow that's being generated as well. Now I know I'm going to get somebody saying, Tiago, why can't you just tell us where to put our money? Guys, you know better than that. I can't give you specific advice without knowing your circumstance. So if that's what you want, go talk to an advisor, someone you trust, someone who knows your circumstance and that can help you with what you're looking for. The next mistake we saw a lot of people make, not checking their personal records. Your SF50, guys, please make sure that you're keeping good records. We have seen people apply for retirement and as soon as they apply, they realize that there was uh, some sort of issue in their record. So maybe there weren't enough years that were captured. Uh, there was something wrong in their employment history. Now this isn't incredibly common, but it does happen. I've seen multiple times where it happens. So this is especially more common if you uh, had a break in service or if you're applying for credible service time. Agencies make mistakes all the time and your work history can be that sometimes. So make sure you keep this information up to date. If there's an issue in your, uh, in your work history, this can cause a hiccup and a delay in your retirement timeline because you may have to investigate, find out what's going on, uh, work with OPM to get this fixed. All of this takes time. That as federal employees, you are responsible for the information that's on you as well as the elections you make. So keep this information handy, keep it up to date, maintain your own records, and don't rely on OPM for all of this. Okay, so next up is taxes. I wrote a piece earlier this year, or rather last year, uh, on how federal employees are taxed. We're gonna put the link somewhere in the description or in the video, somewhere you'll find it. Uh, just look below, you'll find the link on how federal employees are taxed. Many federal employees didn't fully understand how they're gonna be taxed in retirement. So go read that article, but here's a brief recap. Um, your pension, fully taxed. Social Security, mostly, okay? There's a small portion that not for, for the purposes of this discussion, just assume it's fully taxed. Uh, Social Security, mostly taxed. Traditional TSP withdrawals, fully taxed. Uh, individual or joint accounts, those are capital gains taxes, right? Inherited accounts, uh, that depends on whether it's an IRA or not. Um, and then if you have a trust, that, that's where it gets really complicated, uh, depending on the type of trust. And then you have required minimum distributions when you hit 72, or for those of you who prior to a couple years ago were already 70 and a half. So you can see there's a lot of different taxability elements uh, and, and things to consider when determining your taxes. Check out that article linked below. And if you're reading this, there'll be a link on the article and uh, you can get more information on that. The big point I'm trying to make here is that you need to consider that retirement assets, you actually have uh, close to 30%, maybe even more, depending on how much income you have, less assets than you think you might have or that your statement says. Shall I mention that we are in historically low tax environment right now and tax rates could change. You have to be able to keep up with that. So yeah, guys, taxes is a really big thing. Don't neglect it, learn about it, um, get as much information as possible. So now the good news is we can project what your taxes are gonna be so long as you know, the laws don't change, we can project current laws. So we're able to calculate exactly what it is that you're gonna pay. This helps you create a tax budget so that you're, um, you know, allocating your taxes and your cash flow pr appropriately, especially if you're retired already, you're doing estimated tax payments, it, it gets complicated, but it, it's all doable. Okay, so the last one we're gonna talk about today is failing to dream. 
we saw a lot of people last year that just really didn't give themselves the room. And you know, I'm not trying to be woo woo here, but the point is, have you actually given retirement more of a thought than just not working? I want you to imagine yourself having been retired for maybe five years, maybe 10 years, and you wake up in the morning, you look out the window, what do you see? Is that a lake? Do you see mountains? Do you see a beach? Perhaps it's a concrete jungle? Think about that. You also consider that maybe you don't actually need to work until you reach your 20 or 30 years. How can you know this? If you have a retirement plan in place, you can begin to see all of the different things that your wealth can accomplish for you. It's difficult to make these decisions when you can't see far enough ahead to know that you'll be okay if you own that vacation home or that you're gonna be able to retire and travel as much as you want to and uh, visit a different country every single year and spend X dollars on those vacations. Maybe it's investing more in your kids or your grandbabies. Maybe it's being more philanthropic. We learned last year that we need to help people be able to dream big. Don't sell yourself short in the planning stages. We're programmed our entire lives to always be worrying about the future, save for the future, plan for the future. Well, now is the time that you can let loose, but make sure you have a plan because it's not just your money, it's your future. If you've hung out for this long, I promised you we would give you that free ebook on what questions federal employees should be asking themselves prior to retirement, and here it is. Just send us an email to welcome at rmgadvisors.com and just put the word ebook in the subject line and one of our team members will be happy to send that to you. Thanks so much guys and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.